And we welcome you to our second edition of D2 Tuesday, January 16, 2024. A little over two weeks away from the D2 season started and plenty of headlines to talk about. I am Victor Anderson. Let's get right to it. You know where you can find In the Circle on your favorite podcasting platform. Of course, our YouTube channel where you can find D2 Tuesday exclusively for the time being. Anyway, I'll explain more about that in just a moment. Make sure you follow In the Circle on your social media platforms. Rate and review us five stars on your Favorite podcasting platform, we've read as four stars, we tend to believe that you are a hater. As I mentioned, a lot to get to today, so let's get into it. A story that came across my timeline last Wednesday after our inaugural episode of the season uh, from the MIAA. Uh, they announced that they will be implementing replay in a test pilot program. Uh, for the upcoming baseball and softball seasons. Now, the uh, press release reads as follows. In the fall of 2023, the MIAA's Athletics Administrators Committee agreed to implement a pilot program for regular season MIAA baseball and softball contests to test instant replay technology in 2024. Using all the applicable replay rules approved by the NCAA Baseball and Softball Rules Committee, the league will begin pilot testing instant replay this spring. The MIAA institutions that will be testing instant replay for the sport of baseball are the University of Central Missouri, Missouri Western State, and Pittsburgh State, the University of Central Oklahoma, Rogers State, and Nebraska Kearney, will test instant replay in the sport of softball. So three schools doing it for baseball, three schools for softball. Uh, Full disclosure, earlier today, I did send out an email uh, to Central Oklahoma to request an interview with their head coach. When we do have them on, one of the topics that will be brought up is the testing pilot for instant replay uh, for 2024. Uh, Chris Kosky, the MIAA supervisor of baseball umpires, says, quote, I applaud the MIAA in implementing this cutting edge technology and look forward to working with them this upcoming season. Implementing a pilot instant replay program in the MIAA could significantly enhance the accuracy of critical calls during games and ultimately could positively impact the sport's integrity, competitiveness, and appeal, benefiting both players, teams, umpires, and a broader Division II baseball committee, because he says he's a he's the supervisor of the baseball umpires. The results from the pilot test will be analyzed by MIAA coaches and administrators this summer to determine the possibility of welcoming the full implementation of instant replay technology at all campuses. I want to again stress this: full implementation of instant replay technology at all campuses for the 2025 spring MIAA baseball and softball seasons. The selected MIAA test, the the selected MIAA pilot test sites will use the same Sky Coach instant replay system that the association has used in the sport of football for the past two seasons. Sky Coach requires no computer monitors. The technology taps into cameras already being used for game broadcast and does not require a replay booth. MIAA umpires will have instantaneous access to re- to plays for review on an iPad through the Sky Coach app. Now, Austin Mazaska, the MIAA supervisor of softball umpires, provided this. I'm very excited for the introduction of video review in MIAA softball to further the quality of play for the student athletes. From an officiating standpoint, this will allow the league's umpire staff further resources to make sure we are getting calls correct and allow officials to progress their games in a new skill set. The MIAA continues to raise the bar for officiating practices in NCAA Division II, and I am thrilled to aid in these goals. This next sentence is the critical one, folks. Instant replay technology will also be used in the 2024 MIAA baseball and softball 
championship sites. Hello, game changer. First of all, a round of applause for the MIAA for once again being on the front and center of change and innovation. Oh, by the way, the MIAA 2024 softball tournament will be held at Gary Pinkston Stadium on the campus of the University of Central Oklahoma. The Bronx shows May 1st through the 5th. So keep that in mind. I am excited to see. So I'm excited to see how the MIAA implements this, the instant replay aspect. And again, the three schools who were chosen, University of Central Oklahoma, which will be hosting the conference tournament, as I just highlighted, Rogers State, and Nebraska Kearney. Those are the three sites that will be doing the test pilot for softball. Central Missouri, Missouri Western State, Pittsburgh State doing it for baseball. Hopefully, in my vantage point, This can be seen as the first step in the majority of D2 conferences who have the resources to do so to implement instant replay. What my hope and prayer is with this, we see instant replay and the national championship, the D2 Women's College World Series. Now, obviously, it will be dependent on the site. Now, this year, we'll be in our backyard in Longwood, and in the next three years, starting in 2025, it will be taking place in Chattanooga, which I'm sure and I'm confident that they have the resources to implement Sky Coach and the technology needed to have risk and replay available. So a tip of the cap to the MIAA, their their leadership, especially the baseball and softball umpires for understanding the need and the desire to not only enhance the on-field product, but to make sure that the umpires are given all of the tools necessary to get the calls right. Because at the end of the day, it's all about getting the calls right. What only concern will the umpires be willing to have technology in place to correct the call that they may thought was the correct call, but after a second and third look, wasn't the correct call? Because we all know sports have the human element. And there are umpires who feel that they don't need anything to help their calls and that their word is all. I call it the Angel hernandez of this uh, position. But that's neither here nor there. But great job on the MIAA. Instant replay that will be in a test format in 2024 in softball with Central Oklahoma, Roger State, Nebraska Kearney being the test sites for softball. Our our congratulations to them in getting this in place. Let's move forward now. There's some ADs that are going to be moving around, starting with Minnesota State, as Kevin Ford announced this past Friday that he he is going to resign from his position. Uh, He took over leadership of Beaver Athletics in July of 2022. Kevin Harmon, who is the current vice president of student for student affairs, will serve as a interim director for the time being. Now, he served in the same role from April to July of 2022 before Kevin Ford took over as the athletic director so as you're getting new information about that search uh, we will provide that to you on d2 tuesday another school that was previously looking for an athletic director but is not anymore is cameron cameron has hired 
American International Vice President of Athletics, Lou Izzy, as its next athletic director. Uh, this is a, from President John MacArthur. He said, quote, working alongside Jim Jackson for the first month of his tenure uh, will give Lou a fast track to the inner workings of CU's policies and procedures. Combined with the experience in the world of intercollegiate athletics, he will maintain the high standards for success that Jim established both in athletic competition and in the classroom. In just two years at AIC, Lou said and achieved numerous goals, including increased student-athlete retention, new student recruitment achieved by expanding athlete recruiting nationally and internationally, increased department revenue in athletics giving, and multiple facility renovations. His strategic planning and energetic approach to achieving goals will propel Cameron to continued success. Now, this is coming after, in January 8th, prior to our inaugural D2 Tuesday, Jim Jackson will be retiring at the end of February. After a stellar 18-year tenure as their athletic director. He oversaw the renovations of McCord Field, Aggie Gym, and also the Terry Bell Golf Center and the Streets Henry Tennis Complex. And also the creation of the Cameron Gold Club, which is a booster club that he developed based on input from Aggie fans. It has approximately 250 members. The Cameron Gold Club provides financial support. For CU's athletic programs against Aggie supporters, a unified presence at athletic events. From our congratulations to Mr. Jackson, and we wish him well in his retirement. And under his leadership, I do want to bring this up before we go forward to the action that will be taking place back on the field. CU coaches have received 23 Lone State Conference Coach of the Year awards, 11 NCAA Regional Coach of the Year awards, and two National Coach of the Year Awards. And three coaches during his tenure have been inducted to the LSC Hall of Fame. Aggie athletic programs have tallied 16 LSC regular season championships, three LSC tournament championships, two divisional championships, 34 individual championships. The department also boasts 18 NCAA regional championships and has said 19 teams and two individuals to NCAA National Tournament. So our congratulations to Coach to uh, Mr. Jim Jackson on his pending retirement next month. And we wish all the best to Lou Izzy in his tenure at Cameron, which will be starting effectively on March the 1st. Now, let's get to some action that will be taking place on the field and some new members that will be taking place. First, the Mountain East. The Mountain East announced that they have invited Park. They've they've invited Point Park, which is located in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to join the league as its 12th member. Uh, The news came out last Tuesday, a little bit after we recorded the the inaugural D2 Tuesday for 2024. Uh, This comes from the league office. Uh, The Mountain East Conference Board of Directors has approved the addition of Point Park University to become the league's 12th full-time member. Pending their acceptance into the NCAA Division II membership process, the Pioneers will officially become members of the MEC in July of 2024. So again, July 1st, which is the start of the new of the 2024-25 academic calendar year. Uh, PPU would participate in 15 of the MEC's 23 sponsored sports with plans to add four additional MEC sports over the next two years. Reed Amos, the commissioner, said, quote, we are thrilled to extend an invitation of membership to Point Park University to return to the MEC, to return to MEC, excuse me, to 12 full-time members in the 2024-25 season. As we worked with our MEC membership committee this fall, Point Park University continued to emerge as an outstanding fit with an athletic department that we believe will be highly competitive in the MEC. The strategic vision for PPU's academic and athletic future 
led by President Chris Brusalis, gives us great confidence that Point Park is well positioned to successfully transition to NCAA Division II and to become a valued member of the Mountain East Conference. Point Park University has just under 3,500 students enrolled with nearly 100 graduate, undergraduate, and doctoral degree programs and are part of six colleges. What I'm now what will have to happen for the transition to take place. You have to file this application with the NCAA by February 1st as part of a deadline with its transition to the MEC. With successful acceptance to the D2 membership process this summer. And this next part is going to be important, fans, so please listen up. Pending its successful application and acceptance. PPU will begin to compete in MEC regular season competitions in the fall of 2024 and will be immediately eligible for MEC championships provided it advances through the NCAA Division II membership process. So they will be eligible for conference championships. However, because of the transition phase from the NAIA to Division II, Per the current membership process in the NCAA, they will become a full member by the fall of 2027. And if all those checkpoints are met during the transition process, they will become eligible to compete in NCAA championships by the 2027-28 academic year, meaning that they will be eligible to make the NCAA tournament during the spring of 2028. Softball terms we're speaking, of course. So, what does this mean for the Mountain East? It means that a league that is already competitive gets even deeper. It means that Point Park, who went 22 and 18 last year, was a was a semifinalist in the RSC, will have an opportunity to, I think, be a team that could compete in the top four, top five. In the Mountain East Conference, and of course, led by Charleston, who won their regional and had a battle with East Stroudsburg uh, in the Super Regionals. And then you got Fairmont State, Frostburg State, Notre Dame. It, it, it is a league that is going to, it's very balanced where anyone can knock off anybody. Look at the conference tournament last year, and you'll see what I mean, where Charleston had to win five straight elimination games to win the conference tournament and punch their ticket to the postseason. And, of course, you got West Virginia Wesleyan and Davis and Elkins in the mix as well. So, congratulations to Point Park University making that transition from NAIA to Division II. We certainly will wish them well, and we will keep track of that when as that story progresses forward. So, one team will move forward into Division 2 from NAIA. Another school that will also make the jump from the NAIA to Division 2 will be Middle Georgia State. Middle Georgia State coming off their most successful softball season in program history. Finished ranked in the top 20, their preseason number 16 in the NAIA preseason poll that was released in November. They and the rest of their athletic department has accepted membership to join the Peach Bell Conference. This story came, coming out on Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. This is from the Peach Belt offices in Augustana, Georgia. Augusta, Georgia. I don't know what I said Augustana for. I'll explain why later on. The Peach Belt Conference Board of Directors voted unanimously to extend an invitation to Middle Georgia State University to join the league pending approval of their acceptance into the NCAA Division II provisional process. MGA is expected to apply again on February 1st, and if accepted, we'll begin the process and join the fall of February, a fall of 2025. So note that, note those two dates. Park Point will apply February 1st, 20, February 1st of this year to be a member as of 2024-25. Middle Georgia State, they will apply February 1st of next year and will join the league in the fall of 2025, meaning their softball program will be Peach Belt members spring 2026. Uh, said PBC Commissioner David Brunk, 
This is a great addition for the Peach Belt Conference, and we could not be happier that Middle Georgia State has chosen us as their new home in NCAA Division II. Our great thanks go out to President Dr. Christopher Blake for his vision and leadership. MGA is poised and ready to enter the Division II ranks. It will be a great fit with the Peach Belt, especially with all those schools in Georgia, led by North Georgia and Columbus State, among others. Middle Georgia State, a leading public university in the university system of Georgia, serves 8,000 students on campuses in Macon, Cochrane, Dublin, Eastman, and Warner Robins, in addition to their online offerings in over 65 areas of study. Dr. Richard Constantino, president of Lander and a chair of the board of directors in the Peach Bell, had this to say. Middle Georgia State University is a growing, vibrant, and dynamic institution and a great fit for the Peach Bell Conference. The commitment they have demonstrated to their athletic programs, along with their dedication to athletic success for all with their dedication to academic success, excuse me, for all students will enable them to succeed at the Division II level. Michael Brown, MGA's athletic director, had the following to say, I believe that pursuing membership in the Peach Belt Conference will not only enhance the reputation for our athletics program, but will also contribute, contribute to the overall growth and success of our university community. The Peach Belt Conference is renowned for its commitment to fostering student-athlete success, promoting sportsmanship, and providing a platform for a spirited competition. I have full confidence that MGA will not only meet, but exceed the high standards set by the conference. So MGA joins the Peach Belt Conference. Now they will be, they currently compete in the Southern States Athletic Conference, and they're going to bring, along with their Nationally ranked softball program. They'll bring baseball, men's, women's, basketball, soccer, various other sports to the Peach Belt. And again, this will be effective as of the fall of 2025, which means after that trans that four-year transition process that Point Park will be going through, they will be eligible to compete in the NCAA championships by the 2028-29 academic year. So that'll put them eligible to be in the NCAA tournament at the earliest spring of 2029. So two new schools that will be joining D2. Uh, congratulations to Point Park, as well as Middle Georgia State uh, for their pending membership and coming up to Division II. Woo! It's a lot to talk about on D2 twos, and we will certainly continue that as well. Now, before we let you go, folks, we do want to let you know that we have reached out to several schools as of this recording to get some updates with coaches. So we've reached out to, we've reached out to Augustana, we've reached out to Nova Southeastern, we've reached out to Central Oklahoma, just to name a few. And as we get those interviews lined up, you will start to hear those interviews coming up on D2 Tuesday as we're again, we're just over two weeks away from the start of the 2024 season. And the way to Longwood, I guess. The way to the wood. I, look, I'm still trying to figure out some catchy name to talk about the road the teams will travel and the eight teams that will eventually make it to Central Florida to compete for the Division II National Championship starting on May 19th. Once I figure out something catchy and that's going to latch on, I'll let you know. Otherwise, mm, I don't know. I'll figure something out. But what I will figure out coming up on next D2 Tuesday is the following. We're going to talk about two marquee tournaments taking place the opening weekend. The uh, D2 Classic taking place in Conroe, Texas. And as always, the Gulf Shores Invitational uh, that will be taking place down in Alabama. It's two marquee tournaments. We're going to talk about those in great length on our next D2 Tuesday. And who knows? We may throw in an interview or two as well. One final note before I close today on our in the circle Twitter or X account, whatever you want to call it, or Elon's calling it nowadays. We have put up a poll for you to participate in. Do you want D2 Tuesday to continue to be just a YouTube exclusive? Do you want it to be on YouTube and be on our podcast feed? Or do you want it to be just on a podcast? 
You get the vote. Voting will close this weekend, and we'll read the results for you on our next D2 Tuesday. But that's going to end this D2 Tuesday, folks. We appreciate you, your support, and your listening to the only podcast that talks exclusively Division 2. Until next week, I'm Victor Anderson. Remember, folks, there are more of us than there are of them. Top podcasts are out. And good night, Canada. Thanks for watching this latest video. To unlock more content, click on the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. Follow us on social media by clicking at In the Circle SB down at the bottom or download In the Circle wherever you listen to your podcast in the description field.